Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O hope of the living and harbor of rest, where the weary in this world find rest, may we be received into the harbor of reconciliation, and the place of rest with all those who are ple who please your divine will. And we raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Lord, have mercy on us and save us. O Christ, our God, inflame our hearts with love, that we may love you and each other. Fill us with faith and confirm us in true and firm hope. May we preserve in good, de persevere in good deeds, that we may be justified by you, Please your will all the days of our lives, and glorify and thank you now and forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. O oh, wash me completely from iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Seeing guilt, I was born, a sinner when my mother conceived me. Yes, you delight in sincerity of heart, in secret you teach me wisdom. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be pure, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God, God of my salvation, and then my tongue shall ring out your justice. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your good pleasure, show favor to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifice, burnt offerings wholly consumed. Then you will be offered young bulls on your altar.
Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the gate of mercy open to sinners who knock on it. The hyssop who purifies the impure who come close to him. To the good one be glory and honor on this day and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory to you, O Holy One. You descended from the heavenly dwellings to the earthly depths. In your compassion, you took the form of a slave to forgive your servants. You walked on the waves of the sea in order to sanctify Adam, who was created in the image of your majesty. O Lord, you sanctify those who are impure, and with your hyssop you purified sinners and made them whiter than snow. Through your powerful grace, forgive me and your servants who ask you for the pardon of their faults and for the forgiveness of their sins. As you forgave the family of Cornelius through the hand of Simon Peter the Apostle, in the same way, may pardon of sins descend upon us and upon all the children of your flock, whom you have redeemed by your precious blood. We glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Alleluia. sacrifice who offered yourself to your father. You are the sanctifying his soul who cleansed our wounds in your compassion. You are the treasures of your father. Through you and with you your supplication, our supplications are heard. Our faults are forgiven, our souls are protected, and on the glorious day of your second coming, mercy shall be given to us. 
and we shall raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. The true love of the Father far surpassed his Son's great sin. I have sinned against heaven, and before you said the Son, Though my heart now condemns me, you are greater than my heart. St. Paul to the Romans. Good afternoon. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God, not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of, through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Praise be to God always. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Be 
Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, <clears throat> If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. Then, if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a pagan and a publican. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen, again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Then Peter approached and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times. And Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seven times seventy. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord. And exercised in suffering, we form patience. Patience forms character, and character forms hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In this letter to the Romans that St. Paul has, it precedes just the chapter 6 on baptism and our being engrafted into our Lord. So this ceremony that we have of the reconciliation of the right of forgiveness is distinct in the Syriac church. And as you've noticed, if you flipped ahead, we finish with the, the announcement of the resurrection. So we begin penitentially, and we begin announcing Easter. It is one of the reasons why the Mass this evening is at five. We don't wait to sundown. We don't wait to anything else. We don't wait because we don't have the lighting of the lamp and the candle and all of that. Because we already announce. And that's why our fast, even the black fast and everything, remains up until noon on this day. Because of the middle of the day. And it's been a beautiful surprise to see how many people are here, actually. And so I'm sorry we'll hear more confessions after that. But it's actually a delight. In fact, this whole week has been a delight to see the number of people who have been at the ceremonies. And even more so to see the disposition of hearts and souls who have been part of not only to witness the unfolding of the Maronite Church's observances of our Lord's death and resurrection, but of the beauty of seeing the hearts unfold 
before that, those observances. And so it's quite lovely. And so you are to be congratulated to have you here on a day in which no one in the Latin church does anything. And so for you to be here, you have to kind of go against the grain to make the effort. It is the reworking of our minds to think in a different mode. And it's quite beautiful, profoundly. But when we see that St. Paul, you have two aspects that run through this theme of this ceremony today. One is that we have been forgiven by God. And the other is, is our obligation towards our neighbor to be reconciled. You see the great importance that in the Maronite church's mind, the great aspect of it is not only that we have been forgiven, it's not about gimme, it's not about me, but what God has done in order that I may be forgiven, in order that I myself become a vehicle of that reconciliation to others. And hence, this gospel of being forgiving, not just seven times, but 70 times, seven times. In other words, unlimited to be disposed always to forgive. It's hard. It's hard. And in life hard, in our lives, things are often hard, often, or even in general, difficult. And that's why when St. Paul writes to the Romans, he says that God exercises us in sufferings not because he wants us to suffer, because suffering builds patience. If we don't actually enter into that mystery, we don't actually come to the ability to have the virtue of patience. And so he says patience is only the development. It's like humility. Humility is only developed as a virtue by having weathered through humiliations. And so the same thing with patience, the ability to suffer or to undergo can only be developed by undergoing sufferings. And again, it's not because God wants us to suffer or that any of us wish to suffer, but we can all appreciate the patient individual. We can all appreciate the value of the virtue of patience and peace. But it's even more than that, because what patience does is it develops, depending on the translation that you read, sometimes it will say experience. Sometimes it will say character. So the patience that we develop within our lives develop within us personally this character, a type and a quality of our being, which is firmly rooted in peace because we have found our place, our niche. And so diff- sufferings exercises us in patience. Patience develops character or experience as to be the faithful Catholic. And that stability of character, of experience, forms hope. And hope is the goal in this little phrase of St. Paul. So that it's not the difficulty and the crosses that come into our lives, the famous offer it up aspect. But it is precisely within our hearts of the desire for hope. Because hope is what anchors us through life. It gives us a sense of direction. Remember, as we've said in the letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul says, we act in the manner in which we act because of the one who will appear to us on the last day. That's the motivation for the morality. And so in this instance, it's one of hope. But the hope which is built on character, character upon the peace of the ability of patience, but all of it requires that we be able to shoulder the cross to follow our Lord. So it's a very simple idea. And one that we ask our Lord that in the forgiveness that he gives to us this day, that he also bring to us this more profound luminosity of hope within the patience. And when we've done that, then we can fulfill the gospel to find peace and reconciliation insofar as we are able again with those around us. But we are much better situated when we have been exercised in this hope and this patience and this character to be those beacons of light and peace to those around us. In the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So we'll do the supplication. O hearts full of anger, take heed. Go make peace with your foes and embrace them with love and compassion. Engrave on your souls Jesus Christ as he humbled himself you should humble yourselves and grant pardon. Does anger still reign in your hearts? Then you turn from the Lord, Christ who died on the cross, your true teacher. If love for your neighbor is gone, then you hate Jesus Christ who taught mercy and love and forgiveness. Let Christ be our teacher and guide, for he showed us the way to forgive from our hearts, imitate him. All foes will be turned into friends and together in peace we will sing praises to him who forgave us. Stand. Let us confess, adore, and praise the most holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Notice the verse that is now in the Kaddishat inserted as we announce the resurrection of our Lord. Literally what you have there is Mashiho, the D that at the end is actually a preposition, meaning of. So it's Mashiho de kom. They just put it there for easier singing. So it literally means the Christ, that kom is rise, kom, kyomo. Kom means rise. So Christ, that has risen men. Beit is house or the place. Mite are the dead. So that literally is to say, O oh Christ, who has risen from the house of the dead. Etraham alain, have mercy on us. Kadishat Kadishat it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are thine. <clears throat> O Christ our Lord, accept the penance we now offer to you and one another. 
May the grace and the power of your Spirit come to purify, sanctify, and save us. May your life be a model for our own lives, so that we may live imitating your life, your death, and your resurrection. May we reach that day which will unite us to you and to one another, and we raise glory to thanks to you now and forever. Now you will have in your bulletins tomorrow, and you will positively be shouting after the masses tomorrow, but you have your first shouted today, which yes, in your reticence of being Latins, of being quiet, that is not Eastern. And the Eastern tradition on Easter for the resurrection, it is acclamation, joy, jubilance. You can find a YouTube video showing a Russian Orthodox priest walking through the church after the liturgy of the resurrection, tossing eggs, decorated eggs into the crowds of people. That is the joy of the resurrection. It is our main principle and central feast. So while you have in English there, I'm going to give you the Syriac, which will be written in the bulletin tomorrow. So you already know the first part of Meshicho. Meshicho is Christ. Meshicho kom menkabro. In this case, Christ has risen from the dead because the greeting in the East, especially for Bright Week, for the whole first week of Easter is Christ is risen. And the answer, he has truly risen. Christos Anesti in, Greece, in Greek, which in fact I saw once when I was in Greece during Holy Week, it was on the buses. So it would say Route 16 on that little digital sign across the front, Route 16 shopping mall, and then that would disappear, and then you would have Christos Anesti, and then it would disappear, Route 16, shopping mall, and then Christos Anesti, Christ has risen on the public city buses of Athens. That is the spirit of the East. So, Mishiho Kom, Christ has risen, men from, Kabro means the tomb, Kabro. So it's slightly different from the one in the Kadishat. Now the answer is truly risen. So the word in, in the Aramaic for true is shariro, shariro, shariro. And in order to make it an adverb to say truly, you add the ending yith, ith. So shariro ith means truly. Shariro ith, and then truly risen, kom. Right? kom. Oh, now you're ready, my good Maronites, my good Easterners. Meshiho kom men kapro. Shariro ith kom. Meshiho kom men kapro. Shariro ith kom. Meshiho kom men kapro. Shariro ith Come. May you all have an extraordinarily blessed Easter. Christ is risen truly. Don't forget to bring your foods tomorrow for your breaking of your fast, for the blessing, for the Passover.